Hello everyone and welcome to your second C++ tutorial. In this tutorial I'm going to show you how to output data onto the screen like text. I'm going to teach you about variables and how a user can input data and store that information in a variable. So to start off with I'm going to press build and run again and uh, I'm going to explain a little bit about this code. You can see that it says hello world and then process return zero and it tells you how long the program was open for. And uh, this is done because in the main function, and that you can always tell it's the main function because it says int main and it's within these two curly braces here. And it says C out and that just means that it's going to output some data onto the screen and after C out you always have two signs here and you're going to either put some quotations or a variable or something like that and then this ENDL just means end line so another example you could just have another form of text or you can create what's called a variable and uh, what a variable is it's something that basically just stores data and uh, there can be many types of variables. You can have ones that store numbers, they're called integers. You can have strings which store text and character variables that store characters, just individual keys. And uh, so if you suppose you want to store a number, this is defined by int for integer. So if you type int and then whatever you want to call this integer, I'll call it number. And then equals and you can set it equal to whatever you want so I'm going to make this equal to 100 and whenever you type a line of code in C++ you always want to end it with a semicolon which means that it's the end of the line so if you don't put a semicolon and you press build you get an error here but uh, if you put a semicolon it should get rid of that error and uh, so instead of saying hello world we can change this code instead of having some string text we can change it to number so we just type number and now if we run it what it will do is it will display on the screen number and up here we set number equal to 100 so if we now go build and run it's equal to 100 and uh, just to show how you can change this if you go onto the next line and you can type number equals 50 now we can type C out two less than signs and then number again and so what this will do is it will read that number is equal to 100 and it will display number so it will display 100 it will set number to 50 and then it will display number so here's what all of that has done so we see 100 once it's first set up here and then 50 after we've changed it down here and uh, just notice when you change a variable you don't put the variable type in front of it again otherwise that's like creating a new one and you'll get an error because you'll be creating two variables with the same name but uh, that's the integer variable a, uh, another sort of variable is the string and you create that in a very similar way you just type the string and then you want to put the name so I'll just call this one text and set it equal to uh, hello and if you ever do string text you have to put that in some quotation marks so we're going to put hello quotation marks and once again a semicolon at the end so now if I change this to text what it will do now is check that text is equal to hello and then it will display text on the screen and text is equal to hello so here we have hello on the screen and you can change it in the same way and say text is equal to whatever you want uh, another type of variable is the character as I said earlier so you can have a char character variable and 
so you could say set that to A or any character so you could have a asterisk or anything you like but if you have more than one character in the character variable you'll get an error so if I just type lots and lots of characters and try and display character you'll get an error and uh, so you can't contain more than one character in a character variable that's why you use string then now using variables you can get a user to input data into the computer so I'm going to get the user to enter a number so for a number we need an integer it's going to create an integer called input so int input and I'm not going to set it equal to anything at the moment I'm just going to leave it as input just define it now I'm going to have it display on the screen please enter a number and then I'm going to end the line by typing ENDL for end line and then a semicolon and now to get user input from the user you have to use something called CIN if you type CIN and then instead of less than signs you use greater than signs and after you've created CIN you want to say what you want to store the input in and in this case we want to store it in input so now we're going to have a prompt please enter a number and then the user can enter a number but now we want to we can have it so we display what they've just entered so I'm going to end the line and then have displayed input so now if we build and run our program we have a prompt saying please enter a number I'm going to enter 123 here's enter and now it will end the line and just display back what we've just entered thanks for watching your second C++ tutorial and I'll see you in the next video